Hello and welcome back to another episode of A Brief History Of, and today we'll be looking at the unfortunate exercise tiger. The D-Day landing in 1944 was the largest amphibious attack in history. In preparation for this, a number of exercises were undertaken to get troops used to the chaos of war. One of these events took the name of Exercise Tiger, and it tragically ended up with the deaths of nearly 800 service personnel. In late 1943, several areas of the English coast were surveyed for potential training grounds for the build-up to D-Day. Slapton Sams in Devon was chosen for this task due to it having a remarkable similarity to Popperville, La Medellin, Manche, France, which was codenamed Utah Beach. Leading up to the exercises, some 3,000 local residents were evacuated. Training began in December 1943. Exercise Tiger was planned to be the larger of the exercises in the following April. The original plans were for the exercise to last between the 22nd and the 30th, and had been intended to simulate all parts of D-Day, culminating in a landing on the beach at Slapton. Nine large tank landing ships were used to carry 30,000 troops to the mock landing. To protect the landing simulation, the Royal Navy utilised two destroyers, three torpedo boats and two motor gunboats. Between the 22nd and the 25th, the exercise focused mainly on the logistics of an invasion, including embarkation drills and marshalling. It wasn't until the evening of the 26th that the first troops boarded their transport ships. To simulate the channel crossing, the landing ships circled just off the English coast, eventually getting in position for the first light of the 27th. The landing on the 27th included a live fire exercise with an artillery bombardment set for 7.30 and was to be known as H-Hour. Many of the landing ships were delayed and Admiral Don P. Moon set back H-Hour to 8.30. Not such a big deal. However, due to a communication breakdown, some of the landing craft did approach the beach at the original time of 7.30, putting them in the line of friendly fire. The approximate death toll was around 450 men who were tragically caught up in the bombardment although figures have never been officially confirmed by either the US or British governments. So far, Exercise Tiger had been a bit of a disaster, but the decision was made to continue as planned. On the 28th, further tragedy struck when at first light, Convoy T-4 found themselves under fire from German e-boats. Convoy T-4 was carrying combat vehicles and engineers of the 1st Engineer Special Brigade. An attack from fast-moving and relatively small German e-boats shouldn't have happened because HMS Scimitar and HMS Azealia were assigned to protect the convoy. HMS Scimitar had been involved in a collision with an LST and was subsequently ordered back to Plymouth for repairs. Not a big deal in theory, as HMS Saladin was dispatched to replace it, but differing radio frequencies between the LSTs and naval headquarters meant that no one had known about the changeover in protection for the convoy. This gap in protection was exploited by the Germans as HMS Saladin was late to get into position. Two LSTs sunk and a further two were damaged and the convoy fired back at the E-boats, forcing the Germans to retreat back into the English Channel. A total of 746 personnel were killed and around another 200 were injured. Although official numbers of casualties were never released, Many of the soldiers were shown how to put on their life jackets incorrectly and subsequently a large number of the casualties were attributed to drowning. Many more died in the cold sea of hypothermia as they awaited rescue. Any reports of the incident were quickly silenced due to the close proximity to D-Day. All the survivors were sworn to secrecy and the embarrassment to the Allies was covered up. D-Day was nearly cancelled as 10 officers were missing. Each officer knew about the top secret impending attacks for the 6th of June. Eventually, the officers' bodies were recovered, and the fears of the Germans finding out about D-Day subsided. Due to the cover-up, the soldiers who lost their lives at Slapton didn't receive a proper memorial until 1994. Amazingly, both the US and British governments did not show much interest in remembering the dead, and the memorial that is there now was campaigned for by the local resident Ken Small. There is also a Sherman tank on display at Torcross, which serves as a stark reminder of what was lost off the shores of Slapton Sands. Many changes were implemented in the lead up to D-Day as a direct link to the Tiger exercises. Standardised radio frequencies were used between the Allies and proper training was given to troops on how to use their life vests. Also, small wooden boats were employed to help with the recovery of survivors on D-Day, greatly reducing the risk of drowning and hypothermia. Ironically, the actual Utah Beach invasion on D-Day claimed 197 lives, four times less than the estimated amount of deaths during Exercise Tiger. It's tragic to think that the practice caused more death than the real-life event it was trying to simulate. And all that's left to say is thanks for watching. 
Did you enjoy the video? I hope you did. And if that's the case, please click subscribe, like, and comment. And also, if you could, it would be absolutely amazing if you could share videos on any type of social media. And also, you can always follow me on Twitter, which is at plainly underscore D. Once again, thank you very much for watching.